backbreaking. Welfare recipients rejected. Hell yeah, do it, Trump. Switzerland implemented a new Civil Rights Act, and some people will lose their mind when they find out what it entails. The latest Civil Rights Act in Switzerland bans migrants and asylum seekers from applying for citizenship if they have received welfare in the past three years. There is one way that the migrants and asylum seekers can attain citizenship applications, but that requires them to pay back any and all welfare money received. This is the only way that they can circumvent the latest law on attaining citizenship. The old law stipulated that immigrants must stop receiving, or already be off of, government assistance when the petition for citizenship was filed. The new law will make it impossible for asylum seekers and migrants who have lived off state handouts within the past three years to become citizens. This is in effect even if the applicant has lived in Switzerland as a permanent resident for the required time to become a citizen. The intent of this seems to be along the lines of discouraging immigrants, migrants, and asylum seekers from moving to Switzerland for the sole purpose of milking the welfare system and taking advantage of free money. This is degrading to humans who spend their life improving their resume, working hard, and providing for their family. There's no reason why working people should provide the funds needed for lazy people to get by. If someone truly needs assistance, then that's different than those who abuse systems geared towards helping. Government assistance is a helper, not an enabler. The new act includes other provisions such as requiring migrants to demonstrate a greater level of integration into the host culture. Some of which includes having aspiring citizens to have a certain number of Swiss acquaintances and adequate knowledge of the language. They would need to be able to hold a conversation enough to gain employment and become a productive member of the society for which they seek asylum, refuge, or a new home. The Local Reports How to Apply for Swiss Citizenship in 2018 1. Switzerland has two processes for obtaining Swiss citizenship. Ordinary, or regular, naturalization is the one most people go through, facilitated, or simplified, naturalization is a shorter and less complicated process usually open to the foreign spouses and children of Swiss citizens, and, since early 2017, third-generation foreigners. 2. There's more than one set of requirements. To obtain regular naturalization a foreigner must meet the requirements laid out by three levels of government the commune, the canton and the confederation. 3. If you've been on benefits recently, you can't apply. 4. How long you've lived in your canton is a big factor. Every canton has its own rules on this but all expect you to have lived in the area for a certain length of time. 5. You must speak the local language to be in with a chance. 6. Each canton has different requirements, look up yours here usually centering around how integrated you are in the community you live in. Do you have Swiss friends and work colleagues who deem you part of the community? Do you know a thing or two about the local area? Are you down with Swiss traditions, politics and history? 7. Local residents can have a say. Most cantons and or communes require you to face an interview to prove your integration and knowledge of Switzerland where you could be quizzed on anything from the number of lakes in your canton to which days are public holidays and the names of local traditions and festivals. 8. It takes a while. The length of the process varies depending on where you live, but expect several years. 9. It can be costly. Since there are three levels of authority, there are three different fees to pay. While the Confederation only requires 5150 francs, costs set out by the cantons and communes can be much higher. Geneva's basic rate for an adult application is 1250 francs, plus the communes then add an extra 500 to 1000 francs. And all of this with the chance that you could be turned down, as one long-term American resident was in 2014. 10. Your likelihood of success may depend on where you live. Can anyone imagine the accusations we Americans would get if we were to someday do the same thing that Switzerland is now doing? Our country would be labeled as racist, bigoted, xenophobic, and everything else that a Democrat would usually say if they're losing an argument. The UN would waste no time condemning America for making our nation a better place.
Is it wrong to wish for the best and brightest immigrants so that they could immediately become part of the working men's society? They would bring such deep value and culture to an already melted pot without having America pay for them. It wasn't that long ago that people were cheering and crying when a former president asked about what you can do for your country. America wants givers, not takers. We want those who have something to offer to the nation and the people around us, not just taking from the government funds and watching reruns on a price-reduced cable bill that's in a rent-reduced government housing project. America is a brilliant melting pot established with numerous cultures that help make America great. It's amazing to watch another nation put a hard foot down on immigration and welfare abuse. America should find a suitable fix to establish control of welfare abuse, stabilize immigration so that illegal activity is reduced, and find a way for all of our exuberant cultures to make America what everyone expects it to be, the best country on the planet. America would love to have everyone visit who pledges to be a thoughtful, productive, and hard-working member of society. America was built upon the hard hands of the hard worker. We do not and shall not tolerate any form of laziness, entitlements, and freeloading. This is America and we want the best. What do you think would happen if America used the same citizenship and welfare laws as Switzerland? Would people lose their minds? Would people riot, riot?